My name is Baha uh, Hello, I came from Palestine, Bethlehem, and uh, uh, my uh, I was born and raised in uh, in Bethlehem. Uh, the reason I am in this camp is uh, because we got an, uh, the opportunity to come and speak about the work I do back in Palestine. Uh, the work I do is related to planting uh, olive trees with Palestinian farmers and uh, uh, it's part of a larger campaign called the Olive Tree Campaign, uh, which is ran by the Joint Advocacy Initiative of the East Jerusalem YMCA and the YWC of Palestine. When I, uh, when we got the invitation here, we uh, came and spoke uh, about the land issues in Palestine and about the environment uh, in which the Olive Tree Campaign is uh, is working. Uh, we explained uh, the different procedures that uh, the World Zionist Organization and later on the State of Israel have been following in order to. Uh, in, in order to like acquire as much land as possible of Palestine and that happens through uh, illegal means most of the time and the result is usually that Palestinians lose uh, their land for the exclusive use of uh, the State of Israel. Uh, our work is mainly uh, focused on the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip. Uh, in the in the West Bank, we uh, uh, help Palestinian farmers who have uh, land uh, by the Israeli settlements, the uh, Israeli bypass roads, or by the Israeli wall. Uh, and we plant their land with olive trees in order to help them uh, in their uh, struggle to maintain their property and keep their land from being stolen. Uh, by the uh, by, the Israeli military and the state of Israel itself. Uh, part of our work is also to explain about uh, the destruction uh, that happens to the olive trees. Uh, destruction really carried out by the uh, state of Israel. Uh, we speak about destruction of olive trees when Israel builds and expands Israeli settlements in the West Bank, and we know that Israeli settlements according to international law are illegal like the 49th uh, article of the Fourth Geneva Convention states clearly that any occupying power shall not transfer its civil population to live uh, permanently in a territory it occupies which is exactly what the State of Israel does by having more than 130 Israeli settlements uh, built throughout the West Bank and having nearly 600,000 Israeli settlers or Israeli civilians living permanently in the occupied territories. There is also, we explain about destruction that happens as a result of Israeli uh, military uh, confiscates land from Palestinians in order to build a network of bypass roads. Like you know, settlements are uh, built uh, throughout the occupied West Bank and Israel built of roads to connect these settlements together and then with Israel and uh, that network is paved primarily also on on the expense of Palestinian farmers land like anytime you drive through uh, uh, on any bypass road all you need to do is look on both sides and you'll see farmland uh, that's also an evidence that the road itself is paved on Palestinian farmland as well. Israel has uh, built nearly 800 kilometers long bypass roads throughout uh, the West Bank. Many cases where Palestinians have lost uh, land, their olive trees were destroyed so that Israel will build these uh, bypass roads. The owners of the land, the owners of the olive groves that were destroyed, are not allowed to drive on these roads. Like, there is nearly uh, 270 kilometers long roads throughout the occupied West Bank where Palestinians from the West Bank are not allowed to drive on them. Uh, also, the State of Israel destroys olive trees uh, due to the construction of its wall. Uh, Israel is building a wall that's nearly 730 kilometers long throughout the occupied uh, West Bank uh, and everything on the path of that wall gets destroyed including houses, farmland, uh, olive trees and, uh, and so on. Uh, 
Uh, of course, that wall uh, is separating Palestinians from their land primarily, and then separating Palestinians from Palestinians. Uh, and it has like a devastating impact on Palestinian uh, property and Palestinian farmers. Uh, the uh, it's also uh, illegal. Uh, of course, the uh, Israeli wall is illegal. In 2004, the Palestinians have asked the uh, International Court of Justice to issue an advisory opinion on Israel's construction of the wall in the occupied territories. And the findings and the opinion of IC the ICJ was that the wall uh, in its current route is illegal and should be dismantled and Palestinians who have uh, a lost property should be compensated. But that happened in 2004 and since up until today, the State of Israel, instead of dismantling the wall and compensate the people who lost property for it, uh, it just proceeds in the construction of its wall around in and around Palestinian communities. One thing to mention about the wall is that uh, uh, the borders of the occupied West Bank is about 300 kilometers long, and the the route of the wall is nearly 700. So it's more than twice the uh, the length of the actual border, and it's simply because it's just annexes so much land from the Palestinians. Uh, another thing, uh, Israel has destroyed all of the trees uh, through Israeli military operations and that happened a lot of the times in Gaza. Like the uh, the Palestinians uh, uh, road network is not fit enough for Israeli tanks and bulldozers and uh, military carriers so you, whenever the Israeli military uh, does an operation on land, they invade parts of Gaza and they go through like olive groves and destroy every everything on on their way. Uh, th so through also military operations, Israel has managed to destroy thousands of olive trees. Uh, the thing that <coughs> that is mostly uh, practiced right now is uh, the settlers' violence. You know, the state destroys olive trees, but also settlers destroy olive trees. Like, Palestinians lose on average nearly 10,000 olive trees, on average, annually, uh, due to Israeli settler violence. Uh, and that settler violence is not, like, random. It's not like one settler wakes up one day and feels like, oh, I feel like burning olive trees. It's actually a policy, and it's called price tag. And it's when the Israeli settlers want to protest the behavior of the the, uh, the, uh, the the government of the state of Israel. Israeli settler protesting the policy of the Israeli government and in protest he burns down and cuts down like Palestinian olive trees, attack Palestinian property, uh, attack Palestinian shepherds and farmers and so on. And it's called price tag policy and a lot of people should actually find out about it because people think that settler violence is just random but it's actually planned and, uh, and practiced and the destruction as a result of it is enormous. Uh, the <clears throat> so in these ways like the state of Israel has managed to destroy nearly 600,000 uh, in total like there's more than 1 million trees in general that have been destroyed but in particular, all of the trees have been like the uh, the maximum. We we have we did some counts between the year 2001 and 2006, and only in that period, more than half a million all of the trees got destroyed. So the all of the trees are destro destroyed like in uh, in so many different ways. It's uh, impossible for Palestinians to. Uh, to find out how many because it happens all the time in so many different ways and of course the state of Israel will never uh, just bring out the real information about how many trees they destroyed because they, they just don't care they don't care about counting the trees they destroyed they, they're just their mission stops where where they actually destroy so in this environment, uh, ever since the uh, Israeli destruction of all of the trees was escalated, the YMCA and the YWCA, through the Joint Advocacy Initiative, have launched a campaign uh, to invite people from around the world to sponsor the planting of olive trees. And this is something that every single individual around the world
call on people to help Palestinian farmers plant their land with olive trees. We target Palestinian private property that is uh, in a proximity of Israeli settlements, by the bypass roads, uh, by the wall. It's Palestinian private property owned by Palestinian uh, families who are under the threat of losing the uh, losing their land. Uh, we, the reason we call for sponsors is because we want the involvement of individuals around the world. Uh, the, uh, 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 and the involvement in which like some of these sponsors the planting of an olive tree uh, and then we we plant an olive tree on their name we tell them, we give them information about where the tree is planted, who's looking after it, in what community what kind of problems the uh, the family that owns that land is encountering, the history of the uh, settler attacks or violence uh, on the field. So we get people involved in that way and we ask every sponsor to share the story of where their trees are planted. The uh, Also the sponsorships be become very important in, care, in case of destruction. Uh, when the Israelis destroy uh, an uh, olive field, we call on the sponsors of the tree of the uh, olive trees that are planted in these fields to take an action, to write the Israeli embass embassies in their country just to seek explanation why did the state of Israel destroy this field in particular, why there is any investig no investigation whatsoever being carried out in case that the trees were destroyed by Israeli settlers. Uh, and then we want also the uh, diplomatic missions of any uh, of of any sponsor from any country to write their representatives in Tel Aviv and ask them to find out what's happening. And in some cases, uh, people would write about it. We encourage people to write about it in like local media uh, to to just try to raise awareness on uh, on the issue and their immediate. Uh, in their immediate environment. Uh, of course, in the campaign, uh, we have lost a lot of trees that have been destroyed, uh, but also we've gained a lot. Like in so many ca cases, the, the, uh, so many fields that we have planted uh, have, uh, have stayed. We have planted altogether nearly 78,000 olive trees since the year we started. In 2001 and we have reached out to nearly 830 Palestinian families from the West Bank and Gaza. Um, it might seem awkward to say but we uh, we do not give up to destruction like uh, we know that the state of Israel is set up for to destroy uh, Palestinian property so we have two options either to give in and not do anything about it or to try to just struggle and plant once, twice, three times, uh, as long until the the field stays and the trees stay. Uh, one of the fields that we planted in the past uh, planting season in, uh, in in March, uh, in, in past March, uh, we planted it in the beginning of March. Settlers came out and destroyed it. Uh, and then the following week we went back, we planted the same amount of trees, so we planted 200, they destroyed 200, we came back with 200, they destroyed 40, and we came back with 40, and now the field is there. So it's a matter of patience, like, they will destroy, you know it, but their intention is never, uh, is never something that will stop us from continuing to support uh, the people who rightly own the land, the people who have been uh, families who have been minding their land for generations, it's, no, it's not the right of anybody to steal their land from them, even if it was a nuclear power like the state of Israel. Nobody is granted the right to steal land of, uh, of someone else, you know. Uh, the one basic right in the international humanitarian law is right to property. Every individual have the right to the property they inherit or they they acquire, you know. And that's like one of the things we uh, do. Of course we always function on uh, in line with with the international law uh, and always we are we're always in support of uh, 
of the Palestinian farmers whose land is under immediate threat of destruction and confiscation. Uh, in, uh, uh, in general, uh, we work in so many different countries. We have a successful campaign also uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, where people can easily reach out by uh, going to www.plantinoliveboma.nl uh, mm -hmm. where they can get information on how to sponsor olive trees. Uh, besides the planting uh, of olive trees, we invite people from around the world uh, every year, and we've been doing it since the year 2004. We invite people every October uh, to come and help with the olive harvest, uh, where we help Palestinian families that have olive trees uh, nearby the Israeli wall, nearby the Israeli uh, bypass roads, or the, uh, the Israeli settlements, uh, and go to places where a protective presence is important. Uh, we think that international presence is very important. It is important to have people coming to witness the reality that Palestinians are forced to live under. Uh, so we get, pe we have all the time, we have about 60, 70, sometimes 100 people come for 10 days uh, to help with the olive harvest, but also to visit Palestinian cities like uh, Hebron, like Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Ramallah, and see get a first-hand experience on the reality imposed on the Palestinians uh, in the West Bank. Uh, also in uh, February every year, we've been doing this since the year 2008, we invite uh, people from around the world to come help with the olive planting. We have 10 days where we go help Palestinian families plant their land with olive trees uh, and also these lands would be uh, not possible to plant without international presence. Uh, so we have people coming to help with, uh, with the planting of olive trees, uh, as well as we take them to some cities, we have some lectures to explain more in depth the consequences of Israeli policies on the Palestinian people. Uh, in, once again, it also happens in the West Bank. So the uh, come and see programs are like, basically we provide an opportunity for people to uh, come help, see, and learn. Like, uh, come help, learn, and see. It's a balance uh, on uh, trying to balance it in that way where a person can get a comprehensive idea on what is happening to the Palestinians under Israeli military occupation. So the campaign in general is about exposing uh, what the Palestinians are going through and also try to encourage international engagement because it's very important that the world starts engaging with Palestine in a positive rather than destructive way. Like up until today we see that all the measures and the policies that have been carried out by the State of Israel against the Palestinians would not have happened without international support, international political support. So the governments around the world has already chose to continually support the State of Israel but I think it's up to the people to uh, either uh, agree with the policies of their governments or try to get involved in, in a different way because the governments already are already involved. Uh, like the government of this country is already involved in supporting the State of Israel, the government of the United States is already involved in uh, supporting the State of Israel, the government of the UK and so it's time for people to, to voice their own opinions, whether they agree with the involvement of their governments or do not agree. And I think the Olive Tree campaign is just one little opportunity for people to, to get an idea and get an opinion on what is happening and then get people to decide how they can better be involved with what's going on. So mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, so how they can be involved but like uh, they can be involved people can be involved by joining us in the olive planting and olive picking in october and uh, february every year can get involved by sponsoring the planting of olive trees people can either sponsor the uh, trees for themselves or give them as gifts for people like 
a sponsor for your friend as a birthday gift and so on and this way is, is the smart way where you can engage people who might not be interested otherwise uh, so so it's by like uh, yeah sponsoring olive trees is one of the main ways because it means that tree planted in uh, Palestinian land and then the the family that is looking after it knows that they are getting support from uh, from other places in the country uh, in the world like Palestinians uh, for so long Palestinians have been left alone facing the Israeli injustices and the Israeli oppression and it just gives them a moral boost uh, when they know that they are not alone that there are people from around the world who really care about a Palestinian family maintaining its own property. The motto of the campaign is keep hope alive and it's like uh, it practically helps Palestinian farmers keep hope alive for uh, ma keeping their property and working for a better future for themselves and their family and uh, and the future generations. The olive trees uh, are very important for Pal have so many significances. Uh, one of it is like it's called, it's it's seen as the the holy tree, the divine tree. It's very sacred in Christianity, in Judaism, and Islam, and all these three religions exist in Palestine. So it has a sacred value. It also has an economic value. Uh, Forty-five percent of the arable land in Palestine or in the occupied territories is planted by uh, olive trees. Olive trees contribute to nearly seventy percent of our productive economy. So it's like so much. Like every olive tree, on average, produces up to like nine kilograms of olives and nearly two liters of uh, of oil. And it's not something that happens once. It gives you every year. It's a generous tree. So when you lose it, you you can't you can't get it. Also, olive trees uh, uh, the in, in the industry itself, like Palestinians use the olives, use the oil, uh, use the leftovers of the pressing process for heating and olive wood also for heating. And it's also in the tourism industry, it's like uh, the olive wood industry is the pillar of the tourism industry in Palestine so it's very important in religious uh, reasons very it has a religious importance it has an economic an important economic importance and it has also a cultural significance like Palestinians are referred to themselves sometimes as rooted to their homeland in the same way as the olive tree is rooted there are olive trees that have been in existence in Palestine for nearly 4,000 years and it's an evidence that Palestinians are linked to that land for that long you know uh, when you're talking about a thousand years olive tree uh, you're talking about people who have been looking after these olive trees for a thousand years you know or two thousand years like in on the native olive tree in Palestine is called the Roman olive tree and it's because it's it was planted uh, like during the Roman times you know so ev the existence of Palestinians in the land can be tracked by the existence of an olive tree uh, so it's important to start also in the Palestinian struggle it's important because right now the Palestinian identity itself is being fought uh, a lot of uh, uh, like a lot of uh, ignorant people, people who do not know about Palestinian people, prefer to say that Palestinians do not exist. The thing that, the evidence that can never be removed, that Palestinians actually have been in existence and Palestine have been populated for thousands of years, is the olive tree itself. The olive tree needs to be planted and looked after by people. So Palestinians have planted the olive trees and have been looked, looking after them for for generations after generations after generations. So the importance is uh, the, the the importance of the olive tree and its significance goes on to so many uh, so many levels, you know, and that's something known by the Palestinians before anybody else. Uh, also one thing maybe to mention about its significance is that uh, 
you know, back in Palestine, it's like semi... Uh, the weather is like semi-desert weather. It's very dry, and we have, like, very short winters and uh, uh, and rainy se season, like, in Palestine. And the only thing that have survived for thousands of years, the only thing that have survived in Palestine have been the olive tree. So it's very perfect for the environment, and it, it is the native tree. It adapts perfectly to the landscape and to the to the weather in Palestine. So it's it's very important in that sense as well.